Hey dog lovers, welcome back to our channel. I'm here with Charlotte. It's New Year's Eve. I wanted to make a short little video just to say Happy New Year's to all of you and your dogs. I hope that you are having a great night and that your 2019 will be full of tons of pups and adventure. Charlotte is, if she looks a little worried, she is. She's hanging out. She is a very special girl. Um, I don't remember how much I've talked about her on my channel so far, but she is somewhere between eight and 10 years old. She is a former street dog. She was found with a litter of puppies um, that she was a very good mama dog and had kept them safe and healthy. She, uh, she had a rough start at life and she has quite a lot of um, clinical I know clinical anxiety um, issues. Two of her primary triggers are um, fireworks and thunderstorms. Thunderstorms are actually a much bigger trigger for her because not so much of the sound, but because she is responsive um, to the barometric pressure changes, which is really challenging because we can't control for barometric pressure. Uh, she is medicated right now, um, New Year's Eve, not her favorite holiday in the entire world, but she is a very brave girl and she works really, really hard. Um, yeah, and this is our, this is her first New Year's here in uh, Portland since we moved over the summer or in the fall. Uh, and so we aren't sure how many fireworks there will or won't be here. Fireworks are legal in Oregon, which is very different than New York City where they were not legal, though there were still a lot of fireworks. Um, I know, and she is a cuddly bug uh, every day. And so she is extra cuddly because her meds are just starting to kick in. The sun just went down. So I went ahead and gave her uh, her meds, her first round of meds at least um, to hopefully help her be um, less worried uh, if the fireworks start. We heard a couple of booms last night, so I think that we're likely to get quite a few tonight. But I just wanted to make a little video. I'm so excited about growing this channel in 2019. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to share. I know to share my doggy adventures uh, and my amazing dogs with all of you and to learn more about your dogs and the kinds of things you do with them. Um, you know, I think that one of the things that I'm really thinking about is what, and I'm not a person that sets a lot of resolutions in general, but I absolutely like to set goals. I set goals all the time and New Year's is a fun time to set some goals and goals with my dogs. And my number one goal is to have fun with my dogs and to have amazing adventures together and explore fun places. I know you want to explore fun places and play new games. Um, Charlotte and I have been taking a online scent work class that I was lucky enough to get um, comped into from scent work university because I'm writing about it for an article. I am so excited to do more scent work with her. She loves scent work. Charlotte has her uh, champion trick dog title. She has her level one parkour title. So we do quite a lot of games uh, and different training things with, um, with each other and scent work has been something fun that we've started to play together that is a great game for her that she really enjoys so i'm excited to do more of that um serious my younger dog um who you've seen a lot of in some recent videos and i have been doing a lot of rally i'm gonna put some clips at the end of this from the uh, drop-in rally class that we went to last weekend uh, she's entered in her first rally trial in just a couple of weeks. We're mostly going for socialization to that sort of a show environment. I have really no expectations of what will happen in the ring. If we will even finish the course, that doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is having fun with my dog. And I, you know, I, I was thinking a lot about this, um, yesterday uh, on Facebook and all of my social media information is at the end. You can find me on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram um, under at Sassafras Lowry on all those places. Links are in the description box again, as I said, but um, I'm in a lot of dog groups because I like to talk about dogs. Talking about dogs is one of my most favorite things in the entire world. And there were, it was so sad yesterday. There were a couple of posts in uh, one of the sport communities on Facebook that I quite enjoy and have quite enjoyed for some time. And it turned into this really nasty 
defense, like people like getting on the defensive for really no reason about the choice to use um, negative training methods with their dogs. Are you gonna you gonna watch Squirrel TV? It's too dark to see the squirrels, baby. Um, anyway, so she's she loves um, looking out the window and watching the squirrels, but um defending themselves using these negative training methods, using prong collars, using choke chains, using e-collars to train sport dogs. There's absolutely no reason to do it. And some of the justifications were, oh, I have big dogs. Oh, I have high drive dogs. I have challenging rescue dogs. And it just breaks my heart. And I know that I posted a rant about this, um, you know, when I was talking about service dog videos on YouTube a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, in that video, I had my now retired service dog who's a Chihuahua mix. And, you know, some of the comments were like, oh, well, that's all nice and good to, you know, say you're going to clicker train, to say you're going to only use positive reinforcement training methods because you're training a dog that's 10 pounds. And you know what? It's not about the size of the dog. I use the exact same positive training methods with my 10 pound dog as I do with my 100 pound Newfoundland as I do with my 50 pound dog. Giant dog, medium sized, medium large dog, Charlotte's 50 pounds, who has incredible special needs. She's dog reactive. She's, as I said, a very fearful um, former street dog who has come a tremendously long way in the seven years since my partner and I adopted her. And it absolutely terrifies me to think about what would have happened if a different family had adopted this dog, if a different person who didn't have the experience with dogs that I'm fortunate enough to have having been working with and around dogs for 20 years since I was a junior handler and if they had used negative training methods if they had put an e-collar on this dog the uh, the kind of life she would have just breaks my heart this dog has overcome so much in her life has been failed so profoundly by people who left her on the streets we don't know what happened to her before that she'd been living on the streets for quite some time this 50 pound dog weighed about 23 pounds when she was rescued with her puppies she was severely malnourished you know and people failed her and my goal and my job, you know, as her guardian is never to fail her again, to never allow her to be failed again, to create a world that is as big and expansive and beautiful as it possibly can be for her, to let her shine, to find what are the things she loves to do, what are the things she's capable of doing, what are things that are over threshold for her anxiety and we don't do those things, to make sure we create and curate a world that enables Charlotte to be happy and safe and playful like that's my number one goal and when I see people push dogs with you know put prong collars on them put e-collars on them put choke chains on them so that they can so they can what so that they can coerce them into training as opposed to building a relationship and a partnership together I, I just don't understand why somebody would do that and, you know like I you know said in the other rant I get it it works like negative training methodologies abusive training methodologies they work because dogs are afraid and so they they comply but that's not how I want to work with my dog that's not how I want to have a dog that is a partner with me in sports that is an amazing companion to live with I want that to be a mutual partnership where we have a relationship built on trust not a relationship built on fear and when you put an e-collar on your dog when you put a prong collar on your dog you are building a relationship that is based on fear and that's not how I want to relate to my dogs and I hope it's not how you want to relate to your dogs and you know it's <laughs> It makes me especially sad when I see it from people in the sport community world because doing dog sports with your dog is supposed to be fun. It's a way for you to connect together. It's, you know, exciting. It's, it's wonderful to watch dogs, you know, doing things that are building upon what they love to do, running, jumping, smelling, using, you know, their, their, their senses. And, you know, it's one of the things I really love about scent work is that it's taking something that dogs naturally do and allowing us to communicate with each other and solve puzzles together. Anyway, I guess what I'm saying is it just makes me especially sad when 
people who are, you know, who profess to love their dogs and who are training in sports are actually hurting their dogs. No ribbon, no title, no, like none of that is worth damaging your relationship with your dog. It just isn't. Um, and it, it makes me sad that people think differently and are willing to compromise um, the trust that their dog places in them in order to force them into situations, training, or otherwise that they're just not comfortable with. So with that said, I'm gonna wrap this up and uh, go play some New Year's Eve games with my dogs. I hope that you and your dogs are having a wonderful, safe New Year's Eve. And you know, my, you know, I started this video talking a little bit about resolutions for the year, goals, training goals for the year. And I think all of those things, you know, having fun, going on adventures with my dogs, those are all key. But the most important thing for me as a goal for, for next year with my dogs is to make sure that every day I'm investing, positively investing in the relationship and the working partnership that I have with all of my dogs um you know i do different sports and activities with all three of them and each of them um i i'm excited for all of the things we're going to do next year and my my number one goal really is though to make sure that first and foremost before the tricks before the training before anything else is um is our relationship and is having fun together that's that's why we have dogs, right, in our lives. That's why we build our families around um, the needs of our dogs. You know, Charlotte's an amazing dog. She's a huge reason that we moved um, cross country when we did. We she couldn't handle living in a um, on the in the Northeast anymore. I talked about this in an earlier video. The prevalence of thunderstorms just wasn't fair to her. So my family moved. We moved our you know our life to give her um, an environment where there are fewer triggers. So that's. Those are things I'm thinking about. I feel like this year has been so much about centering my my relationship with my dogs from Charlotte's anxiety needs to my youngest orthopedic needs. You know, I, I feel good when I look back at this year and what my dogs and I have done, um, both in terms of the training we've done, the the trick titles my dogs have earned. Um, that's wonderful and those that's exciting. I love pretty ribbons as much as, you know, the next dog nerd, but none of it means anything compared to um knowing you know here sitting here on new year's eve and knowing that i have a amazing um relationship with each of my dogs that's built on trust and love so i wish you all a very happy new year's and i'll see you in 2019 bye